G'day. When I bought this 2014 caravan in January this year, one of the things I knew I had to do to it was a bit of a power system technology upgrade. Because while the van's sort of fairly current, I think, um, cosmetically and functionally, um, it's pretty much up to date. You know, uh, anything for the last 10 or 15 years pretty much had LED lighting and, and the finishes are good and everything else. So vans don't necessarily date um, that much over the last 10 or so years. So if you've got an older van, um, probably prior to 2018, it's probably got a bit of an ordinary DC power system in it. And more and more we need more elaborate uh, power to enable us to go and camp off grid. There's a big shift in uh, available campsites now um, on rural properties and uh, farms cattle stations, all sorts of places are opening up their, their properties and they've got some great camping sites and they're inexpensive, but there's no facilities at all. So as well as needing an ensuite so, so you've, and, you know, adequate water, a toilet, you know, be that a porta potty and a shower tent externally or an ensuite built into the van, beyond that, you do need decent power so you can, you can uh, exist off grid for a few days it, it, when perhaps there's no sun. So, um, so there is a need because when this van was built, I don't think they foresaw needing any power pretty much. I mean, they did. It was a token effort. They had a 100 watt solar panel on it. They had a 10 amp solar regulator, a, a pretty standard um, 12 volt battery and a um, mains power supply. Um, it didn't really charge from the vehicle, although it had a connection. It would never have charged that battery correctly because of the cable losses and, and very poor connections. All a separate issue with you know, the way things were done at the time. So, um, my assumptions were that I would have to do something about this. And the first thing I did was look into uh, ripping out what was in here, which took all of five minutes because it was um, nothing to rip out really, except the battery and a power supply. But all the cabling and everything, you know, say lights and everything else all fine. So all I have to do is change the fundamentals of the battery and charging systems. And that does not need to be expensive. So that was the point of this. Um, because when you look at new vans, there's a fortune spent on technology and stuff. You open them up and it's just unbelievable. They look like a bloody power station. And uh, a lot of it's unnecessary. Do we need microwaves and, and induction cooktops and run the air conditioners when we've got no power? No, we don't. You know, just, if we've got gas cooking, we've got, um, you know, all, all that we need, we can run fine. And, and I mean, if you want all of the mod cons from home, stay home. We don't go to unpowered sites. But if you want to go to unpowered sites and you don't want to spend a fortune, okay, let's have a look at what, what you can do. Okay, so you saw what was there, just a single battery and charger. So this is what we've got now. Now... This is pretty basic, really. Um, it looks complex. There's a lot of cables and stuff. But the reality is you've got a couple of batteries, and these are lithium, 12-volt batteries, 100 amps. So that's 12 volts at 100 amps, and that's what I originally put in. Um, I've since added a second 100-amp bank, and predominantly that was the need for that was driven out of the fact that I've got a caravan. A, this is a dual axle van and I've got caravan movers on it and they use a lot of power and so having the extra capacity there um, helps the motors run better so 12 volts at 100 amp hours 12 volts at 100 amp hours the other advantage of that is if one of these died I've still got uh, full capacity so this could be a 200 amp hour 12 volt and that would be a little bit cheaper than probably doing two separate 100s but not substantially um, Along with these lithium batteries, you need a battery management system, and here it is down here on the sidewall. That's a 100 amp BMS battery management system, and it looks after these batteries to make sure that they, the charge stops at the correct point when the cells have reached um, their cutoff voltage, and also shuts down the uh, battery system should it get down too low to a point where it's below, it could damage the battery, so it it just stops the DC supply. The BMS sits between the negative post of the batteries. These are in parallel. There's a cable that joins those two together, but all the negative goes via this BMS. 
and then feeds into the rest of the systems on the van, including all the charging. So to see what's going on with the batteries, uh, we have a battery monitor and it operates via monitor by monitoring all current traveling in and out of the batteries through this shunt. This is a power shunt down here. So what is the shunt connected to? The shunt's connected to this thing. This is a battery meter, sometimes called a Coulomb meter, and it measures everything going in and everything coming out of the battery. It's very hard to get a good picture of this. It just blurs out. So this battery is currently at 98.3% of its capacity. Um, I can select that in to show how many amps are being drawn down out of the battery at the moment and it's 2.84 amps so the batteries are not under charge they're discharging and that's running all the lights in the van currently because we've got a whole lot of them turned on so it's 196.4 amp hours in these batteries of the 200 amp hours that's available so i took it off charge yesterday and haven't been using it very much so there you have it so I've got 98.3% of my battery available for use or available. So as that discharges, that will tell me what state my battery is. I can look at that each day, see in first thing in the morning, last thing in the afternoon when the sun goes down and I can see where my battery's at. So it's a full status monitor. Um, and that meter is approximately, you know, 50 bucks or something like that off the net. So not an expensive one got a solar controller up here for the 100 watt panel on the roof so this is fairly basic 10 amp and they provide a couple of analog meters to monitor your battery voltage and the only thing this current meter did was monitor solar in and out so as I say fairly basic all right that's the batteries in the back here there's three chargers we've got a 30 amp solar charger which I've programmed for lithium this didn't have a lithium profile in it but this was user programmable to to provide a lithium equivalent profile, so which I've done with that one. There's a 240 volt AC mains charger at 30 amps, which I can set to 15, which it is set to, but I can select whether I want 30 or 15 out of that. And really it's just a case of reducing the amount of heat this generates. This is all sitting underneath the seat in the caravan normally, so you don't want it necessarily, and it doesn't need a lot of, I don't need a high charge current, um, generally speaking. Down here we have a 12 volt vehicle charger at rated at 40 amps. Now again, I don't really want to run this at 40 amps because uh, with overheads of running this thing, I could be pulling up to 50 amps out of my alternator and that's not desirable at all. Uh, but one of the features of this charger is it has a current limiting selector pin on here. And if you put a 12 volt um, source into that, if it senses 12 volts at the current limit pin, on the right hand side there, um, it will throttle back to 20 amps. And so I run this at 20 amps. Uh, and this is an ignition sense. So it turns on when it, when it sees vehicle ignition present or it gets a 12 volt signal here, the charging process starts. So it goes on and off with the vehicle ignition, if you like. I've actually got it working on a low voltage cutout switch here, but you can do it in, in any case this, this is an enabler pin for it. So, but if I'm on a trip and I'm doing 100 kilometres an hour and I can keep my alternator cool, I'm not driving in traffic and idling, which would be detrimental to it, um, and I wanted to really make up some capacity, I can switch this current limiting pin selector off and it will run 40 amps into it. So I could considerably boost my batteries if I'd had a lot of days with no sun, wherever I was. And that's it. Um, those three charges are all in parallel. They go to a common negative and a common positive um, point for connections of all of the systems. There's cables that leave these and go up to the switchboard above, which is all the fuses, etc., for the van systems. So all of that stays the same. The Anderson plug that was already on this vehicle is just simply routed now through this charger to um, provide proper charging. It did have cables that came went straight to the battery from the vehicle and that never charged the battery properly and in fact this battery was completely the battery that was in this van was completely us when i got it so 
um, it was really only ever designed to maintain from the um, from the charge that was in it. It did have a CTEC mains power charger in it at the time, but that was it. So that's all you need, cost-wise, forty dollars roundabout with a lithium profile today. You can buy a thirty amp solar charger, which is probably all you need, uh, and bigger if you want to pay a bit more. You can get bigger charging capacity than that. Um, this is a thirty amp mains charger with fifteen amp selectable and a 40 amp DC charger so forty dollars a couple of hundred dollars for that was on special that Victron charger but there's other products you can buy it does it equally as good a job they've all got a lithium profile as well as AGM and this thing was a hundred and eighty dollars so then you've got cabling and some of these other things that are going here's a few you know dollars to spend on all that batteries 435 I paid for these when they were on on special recently 435 each, hundred dollars for the BMS. So not a fortune. Don't have to spend a fortune. And I'm now set up for uh, free camping, and I can survive for days with what I've got here. It's more than adequate to do um, everything I need. So there you have it. That's as simple as it needs to be. It doesn't need to be any more complex than that. And all fits in with your existing van wiring. All right, so I hope that helps. Um, I hope that's of interest to people. You don't have to spend a fortune. Um, today, you can get these lithium-capable systems. Even if you were still running an AGM battery or you already had two AGM batteries and very basic charging arrangement, you can add those that sort of those chargers, and they're now lithium ready. So your next battery change, I can pretty much guarantee you, you will not be putting AGMs back in again. Why would you? The price is coming down dramatically on lithium. It's about 50% lighter or more, and um, a much higher energy density for the weight. And um, you, can, you can use all of the available, pretty much 90% of the available capacity of a lithium battery, as opposed to only 50%, of the rated capacity of an AGM. So 100 amp AGM only lets you use 50 or you damage the battery. A lithium, you can use 90% of its capacity. So there you go. That's as good as it needs to be and no reason to now not upgrade your caravan to let you go to all these nice places and let you free camp. And also keeps your caravan up to date. So if you do go to sell it, it's, it's um, you know, it's not something's gonna, if people are gonna balk at it and go, my God, I've got to spend $10,000 upgrading this. You don't have to spend it, but that's the perception people have. So if you do it, you've already done it, then they don't have to spend it and your van's worth more than it would have been if you did nothing. So have a look at it. Not expensive exercise. Hope that helps. Hope you liked it. Give me a like. Cheers.